Oh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, as you know. And today I got a special guest for you guys. I'm with Marcus Scott. Marcus is an up and coming rapper based out of New York. He's only been in the game um, for about three years and moving pretty solo, um, as a lot of you guys might be able to relate to. As you guys have seen me interview people on various levels, Marcus Scott is pretty much at the very beginning, but he's been making some interesting moves and I think it's a lot you guys could really learn from him or just see yourself in um, in what he's doing. Some of you guys are a little bit earlier on in him, but I think there'll be a lot you can gain. So let's get this thing going. Uh, first of all, Marcus, what's up, man? What's up, man? What's up? Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate no, it. No, hey, no problem, man. Uh, first, I know you said you've been rapping for about three years and yeah. let's do well, taking rap seriously for about three years, which there's right. a difference. So describe to everybody, like, what's, what's each phase like that year one, year two, year three, where was your focus at? Um, basically it's, um, when you first start out, like every artist, you're just trying to get your music out, music out to the world. You know, you got these big, you know, expectations that, you know, you're going to blow up sooner or, you know, just waiting for the music to hit the right ears. And, you know, that's, you know, that happens to, you know, a rare group of people, but, you know, that's not the whole truth, you know. There's a lot of uh, trial and error within the first year. Um, you know, I brought my own mic, laptop. I was recording music at my house. I was trying to learn on YouTube. My mixes wasn't the best, but, you know, I was understanding the, you know, the basics of what, it, what you need to, you know, mix and record your music. So the first year was more about the learning stage and stuff. Um, the second year was basically building off my mistakes that I made on my first year. So when I dropped my first project and stuff um, during my second year, it was more like, okay, you got to start learning the business point of it because I don't got a manager. I don't have um, a big team backing me and stuff. You know, I was working a regular job, like a regular nine to five job at a salad, rest salad bar. And that was what I was using to um, invest in my music and stuff, my studio time paying for beats um i was actually using the money at that moment for marketing and promoting and stuff but you know got my website up and running um this is all like within my first two years and stuff um getting there on distributors and then now i'm um, almost making my third year um i'm more knowledgeable and stuff i you know i did research i purchased you know courses i read books um you know watching sean's videos and stuff you know there's a lot of um learning in this stage right now because i don't have a manager right, right. Okay. Um, i don't have a label backing me and you know i made a lot of connections and you know it's about learning networking and i think that goes deeper than you know recording the actual music well we're going to talk about definitely um learning connections i know you purchased the master music networking guide and you said that you right. got a lot of like just big gains from using that as well. We definitely gonna talk about that at some point. Um, and because now, uh, I mean, you're at a point where you have some pretty strong connections. Um, right. So yeah. before we get there, I think I remember one time you might've emailed me and you were talking about having the potential for a show with a promoter right. at a big venue. Yeah, yeah, so I how, remember that. What was that situation and how did that work out? Um, let me see. I I don't even let me see. I'm trying to remember because I think it, majority of the shows um in the city are like pay to play and stuff. And right. you know I was doing my research and stuff, and I'm like, you know, is it worth it? Because like there there is a potential chance that um you know you could pay to perform and stuff, and you know gain some fans, but you got to really outweigh the options. Like, are you a opener or are you a headliner? Okay, if you're headlining, you already have fans coming to towards you. You already expected to bring people, and you no, know, depend on where you're at. Like if you're a traveling artist and stuff, the openers are just there to like you know fill in the spot. So bringing fans to for an artist that's not like um native to the city. So you know, I, I thought about it. I'm like, you know, I don't think the price of admission is you know worth performing at this point and i was being realistic with myself i'm like yeah. do i really got you know 25 people that's gonna come down to see me perform for 10 minutes and then there's a whole lineup of other people you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. is am i am i really giving my fans a bank for their buck yeah so i'm like you know what um i'm probably just gonna decline on that i did pick up a show like later on in uh, um december that i just passed in 2017 
Yeah. And you know, that one I I could say that that show um that show was more um more of like a I'm leaving. Oh. She has my number right okay. Um I could say that that show was more of a like it was more of an eye opener cuz it was like a there was A&R some labels there and stuff. And um but you know, it's the you know, the show scene for me, I think it's more centered around if you have a you know, a fan base and if you're headlining more. All right, so that's an important thing. I mean, especially, I mean, you broke down the New York scene in terms of, like, the headliners and the openers, but that's pretty, um, you know, that's pretty parallel to most of the cities. You right. Know, when you talked about just actually backing up from shows, you actually had the opportunity. A lot of artists um, are looking for those opportunities to perform and open for people, but you're saying, for you personally, you said, no, it's not worth it. I'm going to just back off until I build my natural fan base a little bit stronger. Right. Okay. Cool. That's, I mean, that self-awareness is a huge thing, man. Um, just to know when you're not ready for a certain situation, because once you get out there, you're out there. And then that's your brand. We think about the brand with the actual artist a lot or the consumers. Right. But we don't talk about that professional brand enough because hey, you work with those promoters a few times and you're, you're not holding that weight. They will, right. they will ice you out for yeah, that. You know, Right. At the end of the day, they're trying to make their money and you're trying to yeah. perform and, you know, you okay. got to think as, you know, manager and stuff like, is this a good look for me? Is this going to benefit me in the long run? Cool, cool. So definitely stay building on that situation um, with those people until you're ready. Uh, but let's, matter of fact, let's go ahead and skip into um, how you use the Master Music Networking Guide. I would love to hear, um, you told me some, like, compelling stories on that before, um, but tell me... Um, just some of the things that you gain. For those of you guys who don't know, I dropped a book called Master Music Networking Guide. It's not really a book, it's videos, it's interactive. Um, right. Back in January, 2018, this is like eight months later, nine months later that same year. But uh, Marcus uh, purchased it and he's been sharing some things that he's been doing with it for some time now. So uh, like, tell me, tell well, everybody else how you were able to use it and what you've been able to learn. So um, basically there was a lot of, you know, interesting things that I never thought of, you know, how to utilize uh, social media platforms, especially on Instagram. So that's where I'm mainly at all the time. Um, there was a particular section where it was saying how to get inside the inner circles of the people that you're trying to target. So let's just say you're trying to get inside, I don't know, Drake's circle. Instead of you contacting Drake, <laughs> the person that's not going to answer, you go, you go around to the people that he hangs around. So basically, um, his friends or whatever that he, that he hangs around, they're more likely to listen. Drake is more likely to listen to his friends and trust their, you know, judgment and agreements and stuff because, you know, they already got that bond. Now, if you could make a connection with one of Drake's friends or an engineer or, you know, someone that has a connection to him, it, you know, it might not lead you all the way to Drake, but it can get you into that circle. And, you know, most of the time, that's all you need is a break or, you know, just a little connection just to get you get your foot in the door right right yeah. i mean that's yeah that's definitely the concept in general i know i get a little bit more specific on how to do those things in the guide but um i know you said you used it a few times can you give right. them a few like just straight up stories that you use it yourself with right so um there was one time I actually um i was in college right uh yeah i'm, I'm in my college classroom and there was this guy and you know people usually stand out a lot and stuff you could tell by like the way they carry themselves and this guy he was sitting in the back of the class he always had some designer clothes on and stuff or whatever like i always <laughs> noticed him but i'm like okay this guy, i don't know he he got a, a little bitch too much a little too much money to be in you know college or whatever and stuff right so okay um one day i just went up to him I'm like yo let me ask you a question um like I, I don't know him so i just made up off the top of my head i'm like yo do you do photography or like I think I've seen you before in Soho or something like that. <laughs> so my, so like I didn't know him just just to start the conversation up and he was like, Oh yeah, you know, I'll be down there once in a while, this and the third. So um I got his Instagram and stuff and he was following me and stuff and I didn't tell him that I make music and stuff. So he was like noticing, you know, me doing the music stuff and to this day, I still don't know what he does, but he has a connection. <laughs> he got a connection in the industry because he's always at these label events and stuff like that. Um, yeah. You know, we even talk about, you know, trying to get a label meeting and stuff or whatever. But, you know, that's something that 
decided to put off to the side and stuff because I feel like I'm not ready to you know enter a you know label meeting with Republic or something like that. Okay. So yeah, but um, I mean that's not necessarily like about the you know section we was talking about, but that was something that I feel like you know you make observations, but um, I think the biggest break that I had from using the guy was um meeting the, um Mama Kim from Love and Hip Hop New York. Yeah. So the, the way that happened was, um, I was using that you know the section that you said like you know the um, look look on the you know click on the you know how people tag uh, celebrities tag people or they tag yeah. venues and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was on the explore page. I seen the artists. Um, you know, I clicked it. Like you know how you click the photo that shows all the people that's tagged, mm-hmm. and it said DTF Radio. And it said the person that was the host of that um, station and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I clicked, you know, the host and stuff. And I don't know, I just decided to reach out. Like, hey, um, you know, I wanted to know, is it possible I can get a, you know, interview on the station and stuff? You know, because I noticed that you look for artists and stuff. She was like, oh, yeah, you know, um, you send me your music, send some information, some photos and stuff, and I'll get back to you. So I did all that. And um, we set up the interview. And I didn't know anything going into this. I just knew who who the host was, and I was going to this radio station over in Brooklyn. I go there and stuff. I go there with my boy and my girlfriend, and I don't watch Love and Hip Hop, so I, I, didn't, I wouldn't know who's these people, you know, who's the, you know, the people on the show. So the person I was, you know, DJing for the set and stuff was um, Mama yeah. Kim, and I didn't know that until my girl told me and stuff. And, you know, I was talking, you know, doing a regular radio interview, and they was, you know, surprised by how I carry myself, because I don't got a manager and stuff, you know. I, I'm telling them all this stuff, and they're like, "You doing all this by yourself? You got distributors, you know? You got your your website up and running? You got all this by yourself?" So, we was talking afterwards and stuff. Um, you know, she really liked my movement and stuff and what I stood for, and she, you know, she gave me her phone number and said, you know, that she DJs usually at some clubs downtown once in a while. She was like, "Here, um, call me, um, hit me up if you need anything." Um, yeah. You know, I want to play your music at some of the clubs that I, you know, DJ at and stuff. So when you get something and you mix it and master it, you know, send it over to me and stuff. And you know, I got her phone number personally. Um, there was another time, DJ Bobby Trent from Hot ninety seven. But well, before you move on, um, yeah, into like any other stories you might have used it with, I want to bring clarity for anybody that's listening on what you did. So first of all, you said. I think I know the method you're talking about when I, it's just one of the, like, I don't know, like a hundred things I got in there, but right. you're talking about basically like stalking people's pages, paying attention to when they tag somebody or mention somebody that might not necessarily right. have a big name themselves. Right. For one, you already know there's some kind of relationship there, right? So that's that whole, don't go for the big person, go for a smaller person, but also that's letting you know, like this person is someone that they got a relationship with. So you- right. Like, I know I've literally seen P. Diddy, like, tag somebody before in a picture, and I went to the, follow the page. It was this chick who had, I don't know, like, 900 followers or whatever. Her page was on private and stuff, so I didn't, like, right. it on, but, but it was clear that there was, like, a legit relationship, not even just, like, some fake industry we taking pictures for her pictures, right. but there's a real connection there. So you, somebody, who was the person who tagged the, tagged who, Um. I'm really not sure because, like, it was on the Explore page and okay. it was like, you know, how they tailor it to people you follow. So I follow a couple got people it. from the city. Got it, and got stuff. it, got it, got it. So, yeah, you, it was, somebody big tag this station or something like that. You follow the station, connected. Yeah, to I don't even think it was a big artist. It was like an upcoming artist and stuff. And, okay. You no, know, I just, yeah, clicked the thing and I was like, oh, that's the person I hosted. Let me click her, looked at him, like, oh, all right. Yeah. So now I'm going to, you know, hit her up to see if I can do the interview. Yeah, man, that's one of the best methods though just just straight up figure out like what else is out there because you never know everybody else right. you, just, you stalk who, everybody and whoever everybody else is mentioning okay cool cool um i heard a few other little things in there but i want to skip on because you were headed to another story uh you said dj bobby trends what happened with him yeah so um i, can, I you could probably say this is part of the same method and stuff just um not like on social media mm-hmm. um Jimmy Jazz, if you guys are, you know, where the clothing store, they had like a little, um, you could say promotion, I guess, for um, Adidas and stuff. And it was like an open mic thing. So you submit your song and, you know, it gives you a chance to perform at SOBs and stuff downtown. Or was it SOBs? 
it was one of those. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was SOBs. Um, yeah. So long story short, I didn't get um chosen and stuff. But you know, I'm not a SOB person and stuff. You know, I still wanted to go out to see. You know, what was yeah. you know the the um you know what was the hype about and stuff. So I, I pull up and stuff, and you know, Ebro's there from Hot 97. The whole um Hot 97 cast was there. Ebro, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, um DJ Cast one, and they're the judges. So, you know, the show goes on and stuff or whatever. And I'm talking and mingling with people and stuff. Now, I noticed there's a DJ that's DJ in between the sets and stuff for the performers. Um, that was D- DJ Bobby Trends. After the whole event, everyone is trying to run towards Ebro and Laura Styles and stuff, trying to, like, upcoming artists, you know, trying to mm-hmm. pitch their music, like, oh, listen to my song. I'm a big fan. You know, everyone's going to the people that's um, more known. And what I decided to do, I'm not going to waste my time, you know, going to them because they probably get people like that every day. You know what yep. I'm saying? So it's nothing so it's nothing new to them. So they, you know, hey, what's up? Keep it moving. Bobby Trends, um, you know, not a lot of people was going over them and stuff. I went over them. And I didn't, what I did, I didn't bring up my music. I didn't tell them I was an artist. I said, hey, what's up, Bobby Trends, yo? Um, you, you know, you was rocking those sets in between, you know, the performances and stuff. You know, I really respect what you're doing, Hot 97, what you've been doing for the past few years. Um, I wanted to know, by any chance, um, do you happen to, you know, need an intern, like, you know, um, advertising and marketing? Because I yeah. was in school, I was doing, um, you know, uh, communication and stuff, so I know how to run the social media ads. Yeah. I know how to, um, you know, analyze analytics and stuff, and I could tell you, like, who's your target audience or, why is your post not, you know, reaching the people that you want to reach and stuff? Mm-hmm. So that's what I was, you know, offering to him and stuff. And he was like, you know what? I like, you know, I like, I like what you're saying and stuff. Cause you know, there was somebody else before me and they trying to, you know, ship them the music and stuff or whatever. And it's, yeah. it catches their attention when you're not bringing up music, when you're invested in what they're doing. You, yeah. They don't want to hear about you. They want to hear about, you know, them and what could benefit them. Mm-hmm. So he actually liked what I was saying and stuff. Um, he was like, you know, you know, do you have any connections with music? I'm like, yeah, you know, I make music here and there and stuff or whatever. He was like, dope, dope. He was like, here, take my number down, send me a text and stuff, and you know, I can see if we can get you into like an internship and stuff. Um, so I followed up. I followed up with him. He responded back. So I'm like, all right, this is real phone number. I got DJ Bobby Trent's phone number, you know, in my phone. That's a connection made right there and stuff. Um, so you got two real phone numbers. You got Mama Cam's number. Yep from this and then you got Bobby Trends phone number just from hey how you been moving but basically man just being genuine um not being you know too thirsty to ship out the music and stuff because you know they're DJs and they're people in the music industry they already run across people like me and you you know a thousand times a day and stuff so the last thing they want to hear me, about man, is I'm probably music artist, man. Don't say me. <laughs> oh, I, I mean I'm talking to the you know the people that's watching <laughs> <laughs> no, nah. but like, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, but okay. yeah, you know, yeah. All right, well, like, so what I really love about what you did, man, is as you said, not only did you not immediately leave with, "Hey, man, listen to my music," because they're gonna hear that a lot of times. People hear it all the time. Right. I hear it all the time. It, right. I can't. I can't take it all. But you, not only, but you added real value. So it's a section. I, I remember in the, in the guy talking about like, not, don't just say, "Hey, do, if you need anything, like, I got you," because right. nobody's gonna remember that. People tell me that all the time. Hey, if, if I need anything, like, they got me. I can't right. do that honestly. Like, all right, if you do photography, be specific. Then say, hey, "I got, I could, I'm good. I got some photography for you that I could do. Or I know some good photographers, or I got some models, or I got whatever." All right. But the, so, not only that, so you so. Did you not just like say anything? You also because like where are they gonna get from you? They don't know you for one. They don't know the value you have to offer. And two, right. like if they're they're typically gonna be higher up than you, so like <laughs> they, right. they're not gonna be looking at you like that. Like right? they're trying to get to right. higher than them. But even bigger than that is you added real value. Like and the value, kind of how I talk about in the guy is what they actually need, not what you want to give them. Right, exactly. like people have offered me music for an intro far at a time that I was never going to do an intro. I didn't have. I know I have a little intro now in my videos, and it was no right. to anybody. I didn't even get a chance to listen to people's videos. I'm music for an intro, but if it's not something I'm looking for at the time, then 
I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't do anything. Yeah, it, it was no value to you at that moment. Right? Exactly. But then, hey, oh, can I edit your videos? Oh shit, I need a video editor. You know what I'm saying? Right. So and hey, the the video I I have right now, like the video editors I have right now, and that intro I have right now, hey, the video editor just slid his own music into the intros. Okay, cool, whatever. Right. I don't care as long as you edit my own vi- my videos. You get what I'm saying? So right. like that kind of stuff gives you opportunities by providing real value. You said, hey, something specific, intern, all right? Like whatever kind of intern you need you, you, just to get the ball rolling and then who knows right. what you're evolving to, man. So I think that's really dope how you've been moving, man. Um, but just to stay on Bobby Trans for a little bit, have you guys got a chance to follow up? Well, what's that looking like? Yeah, so um, what happened with that, um, usually with the radio stations and the internships, like this is all for, like for all radio stations and stuff. Um, they have to, you know, get... Um, you have to send them to a certain department in Hot 97 that reaches out to the school. You got to be in a certain, uh, what is it? Um, Program. Have a certain, yeah, like journalism or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's like a lot of conflictions and stuff or whatever. But, um, you know, even if, you know, it didn't go through all the way and stuff, it's like, you know, just knowing that I got his, you know, phone number there and stuff. And, you know, if I wanted to, you know, I could just, do you know, p- pick up on a... The, um, the strategy you showed about, you know, creeping and stuff, um, you know, uh, yeah. check the fly, check his page, see if he's doing any um, clubs or parties and stuff, shoot out to there, try to link up with him sometime during the night and be like, hey, um, what's up, Bobby Chance? I don't know if you remember me. Um, I'm, you know, we spoke um, a couple months ago at the Adidas event at SOBs and stuff. Um, I don't know, are you still interested in, you know, this, that, and third, you know what I'm saying? And you can show him that, you know, that we spoke, you got his phone number and stuff, and, you know, when you actually showing up and these people see your face more and you're, you know, genuine and you're not just shoving the music down, it comes off more genuine. They see you more as a person instead of, a, you know, I don't know, a number or, you know, a person that... 100%, bro. Right. And you need to build that long-term relationship. So I would just tell you, I definitely encourage that you uh, actually follow up on that strategy. And right. And keep popping up, showing face, let that build... Hey, I know the radio station situation didn't work out, but I know you got a lot of things you probably mo- trying to move outside the radio station. Like, so if you right. need help or internship type thing, just there and, and stay building them relationships for the long term because that's only going to bring you new relationships that, that are valuable. Right. So I definitely say follow up with that. Okay. Definitely. Cool. I mean, anything else, man? I know you, as an artist, right, you say that you're moving by yourself. You don't have a manager at all. Nope. Um, and that can be that can be tough, all right. Um, yep. uh, with that being said, have you thought about getting a manager yet? And if so, wh- why? Um, and if not, why not? Um, well, right now, like you know, if uh, someone came up to me and they said they wanted to manage me and stuff or whatever, you know, uh, depending on who the person is, because you know, I don't think I would let any random person just manage me and stuff. Um, like someone, someone I've been speaking to, someone that you know knows how how I work and stuff. You know, I might just take up on the opportunity and stuff. But I mean, right now I'm in no rush. I mean, if it happens, it happens and stuff. I'm down to do it and stuff. And it's just, um, like I feel like I have a lot to manage right now and stuff. Cause like you know, okay. you know, yeah, this, you know, marketing and stuff. I got a project coming out and stuff. Um, music videos, promo videos. I got yeah. working with like I'm playing all hats right now and stuff. So yeah, it does get tiring and stressful and stuff. Trying to keep up with emails and stuff. But I mean, um, it actually teaches you a lot for the most part. So you know, for the artists that's out there that's wondering if I should get a manager, um, I would just say just manage yourself right now because when you learn the business side of it, um. In the future, you won't get jerked by a manager. You know what I'm saying? They, you won't get, you know, tricked to sign in a contract or, yeah. you know, the situation that happened with Future, how his old manager or old label had him still under contract and Future owed him millions of dollars. You don't want to be in that predicament. You know what I'm saying? So um, learn how to, you know, work around, learn how to manage yourself. And that's basically how I can say, you know, managers is not for everyone, but sooner or later, you're going to need one. Mm. Okay. Cool. Well, in that case, and I, I definitely agree, everybody should learn as much of the business as they can and I know as much as they can at the beginning before they really look into a manager type situation. But right. what does your team look like then? Like, all right, do you have some producers? You got some graphic designers on your squad? Like, what are you doing? Are you completely solo? 
Yeah, so um, let me see. Necessarily, like um, the most like the most I have for a team is like I just have dedicated people that I, like my go-to people. So like when I go to record music, I don't go to a whole bunch of studios and go through a whole bunch of engineers because then my sound will sound inconsistent, and I want my sound to sound consistent throughout the whole project. Because mm -hmm. you know people got different styles, people mix differently, and I don't want it to sound all over the place. So. Mm -hmm. I have one engineer that I go to for all my music to record. Um, I have a director that I go to. It's like, I only go to him because he knows my vision. He knows my music. We got a good relationship. So, you know, we hit it off easy and stuff. We bounce ideas back and forth without no problems. Um, let me see. For the photographers, you know, I circle around probably like a few and stuff. I'm trying to expand that and stuff, you know, get some, you know, different ideas because, you know, people got different creative uh, processes. All right, so um, graphic it's, it's, oh. nah, so basically right now your team is kind of like contracted or you work with people on projects, but you don't really have a team that's like around you 24-7. or Right. Okay, cool. I mean, that's that's just a part of starting the game off, you know, unless you just happen to have some friends that are already moving in the same direction and they do completely different things. But, right. Well, well, tell me this, man, because right, I'm an artist and I'm watching you in this interview, right? Or I'm just, and, or just somebody who comes across you. First thing I'm gonna wonder is, is your music good, right? So there's a lot of different people who love um, a lot of different styles, but I wanna judge it this way. You worked with Mama, well, you've talked with Mama Kim, and I, like you got, right. I think you said you've talked to her like multiple times, right? You yeah, got, like um, she tried to get me, um, to go to like a an event like on the yacht it's like a yacht party and stuff with other people from you know the cast and stuff okay. and you know that that didn't happen because like she was trying to get me in but you had to be like a certain age and stuff i'm like i just turned 20 like a like a few weeks ago and stuff oh, so dang. i'm like right so yeah so like, this guy yeah. got you ahead of the game bro okay so right. tell me <laughs> but has she played any of your music anywhere yet like um what is it i'm finishing up my project right now as soon as it gets like mixed and mastered i'm sending it off to her stuff but she said let her know as soon as i you know as soon as i get the finished copies all right so know, I send off. what if people who has she heard any of your music or anybody heard any of your music that they've actually played it because uh, the point i'm trying to get across is this connections is one part of the game and this is something that's totally totally important but at the end of the day you got to back it up with a good product so right what's the response that you're getting from your music and even these people that you're connecting with, do they feel like you're at a point where they would actually play your music or play it with somebody else? Yeah, definitely. So, um, like, when I showed Mama Kim my music, she was surprised because it was like, when she heard me rapping and stuff, like, I, I'm from New York and I have, like, a weird... People say I sound like Kid Ink or they, I sound like Tiger. Or I even heard someone say I sound like... On one song, sound like Low Skies. But basically, I have, like, a, you know, a swag rap type of style okay. and then yeah it, it kind of when i showed um mama kim one of my songs and stuff she, that has singing in it she was like whoa like you know you could do both like it kind of caught off guard a little okay and um like if i show people my old music and stuff and compare it to my new music people would not expect the change and stuff a lot of people's more receptive to my music now because I'm making music that I feel comfortable with. I'm not trying to be too many. I'm like, I'm not trying to be another artist. I'm, you know, I'm focusing on the style that fits me. Um, so your old music is trash, bro? Nah, I mean, well, matter of fact, yeah. I, I, <laughs> nah, I, <laughs> it should, it should, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, if, when you start over recording yourself, every, when you listen to my new shit, it's like, whoa. It was yeah, like a whole 360. <laughs> it's good to have that progress, man. Unless you yeah. start off and you got like a, whole like label team and they're guiding you and executive producer right. it's hard to just come out the gate with a project DIY and then not sound right like, yeah like, and, and that's another thing you know yeah, when you first yeah. put your first song I was not gonna be sounding like some high quality Def Jam release and stuff you know okay especially yeah. cool cool well I will some what's the biggest I want to leave them with this man what's one of the biggest things that you feel like you've learned throughout this process um, just in general and then after that I got one final question that's more specific to networking alright so um, one thing let me see true that I learned through the whole process I would just say um, 
I think knowledge is the key to this point. You know, at, in this day and age of music, it's not all about if you can rap, if you can make catchy melodies and stuff like that's a cool little add on and stuff. But if you don't have the knowledge and stuff, because you know, there's people that you know blow up off of Vine like Lil Yachty and stuff, you know, and that's a one in a million chance. Now, for the other, you know, 999,000 people and stuff or whatever, like you have to put in the work and it's not all about the music sometimes, it's about connections, it's about how much you know. Um, it's about, do you know who your audience is? You know what I'm saying? If you make trap music, I don't think you want to tailor your trap music to uh, R&B singers. I mean, not R&B singers, R&B fans or fans of Chris Brown. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not going to convert over and then you're going to waste your money in the process. So it's about knowledge, research, um, analyzing your analytics. If you don't got a business profile on Instagram, you're definitely behind in the game. You need to <laughs> so convert You need to convert the Instagram over to the business page because that's where it's at right now. Yeah, that's, that's, hey, that's, that's a whole other conversation and I will <laughs> make sure I do, do something covering that. Matter of fact, I mentioned that before. And speaking of Instagram real quick too, how many subscribers, not followers, do you probably have at the time so they can know Right, so um, right now I got eight thousand plus and stuff. I'm, um, you know, slowly approaching real fans, um real followers. Yeah, all real followers. Um, I'm slowly um approaching ten k. So How basically, what I all right. So what I did um first, I was trying to do it the regular way. You know, just hoping that people landed on my page. This is like back in the days of stuff before um Instagram started inserting different algorithms and stuff. So over time and stuff, um, they switch over, they switch up the algorithms, and they make it to the point where they don't even put your posts in like, the, it's, it's it's weird because they switch it up all the time. Yeah, they switch it up all the time. Yeah. 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 The time. Yeah. So right. um, I hired a service. I think I, we spoke, you know, before about it last time. Um, yeah, yeah. I hired a service to that. manage my Instagram, and what they do, I told them my target audience because I got the analytics, so I know who to target. So I'm like, all right. I need you guys to target this age range. I need you to target uh, males. Make sure you target females and stuff. Um, I need you to target this demographic and stuff, um, this location and stuff, because this is where majority of my fans are, which is New York. That's that's what th this is what the analytics analytics is telling me. So, and you know, you got ATL coming in second. You got you know LA coming in third, and then the other cities is last or whatever. I focus on the main ones, and then that's what they target. And you know. Um, yeah, I've been using the service and it, you know, it works and stuff. I get, you know, full blown analytics and stuff. I can email them and, um, they give me analytics themselves and stuff. You engagement? So, what happened? You have pretty good engagement. I don't have my yeah. phone. I need to check real quick. But I just yeah. Wanted... So, um, yeah, every time like I got, you know, posts that, you know, they get a whole bunch of likes, but it's not even about the likes and stuff. Um, engagement is basically like, do they interact with your um your links on your bio and do they um true like how many people land on your page and stuff and you know um that's another thing i think you guys all should get like a website so that way you guys can keep track of how many people um hit your link and stuff so yeah. like there's people that click my links and stuff um it's, it's, you know honestly speaking i think i could do better on um instagram and stuff i would like i want to be more consistent and stuff but you know when you're playing a whole bunch of roles it's like Right, it's hard for yeah. specialize, and you actually a lot of stuff does start to fall through the cracks. So, right, I'm gonna let everybody else reach out to you um, for the that service, and you can give them your opinion on the service, your testimony, your right. service, whatever they want to know, and for more information about that. What's your Instagram? Uh, my Instagram is Marcus underscore Scott. That's M A R K U S underscore S C O T T. Okay, bet and. Final question now, because um, I end up getting sidetracked real, real quick. But the final question in terms of networking, man. Um, I know you use the guide, and one of the th primary things you've used is hey, just really engaging with people who aren't necessarily the person, but they're connected. What would you say? Two part question. One, what would you say the value has been for you in in getting that guide? Um, like, was it worth it? And what would you say that <clears throat> the value that you got of it is? Um, yeah, I would say it's, it's totally worth it. You know what I'm saying? Um, one part of actually being in the music business, especially independent, is investing in yourself and, you know, investing a couple of dollars into a course and stuff. It's like, 
it's a no-brainer. You get what I'm saying? And another thing is not going to work unless you put the work in. You're not going to read it, and it's not going to happen. As soon as you read it, it's not going to happen overnight. You got to put the work in. You know what I'm saying? You can't just – you got to utilize it. Like, the same way you'll utilize – you know, your little FL studio, as soon as you buy it, you got to utilize your, you know, your courses and your tools and stuff. So, you know, I would definitely say that worked. And I would just say um, the networking and the, you said it does, like one part of the guy that I like or that I found that was useful. Um, yeah. What was the biggest, like, just value in general that you got from it? I would just say, um how to net like just how to network and how to maneuver your way around like especially the um part about finessing like the about the kid that finessed his way into the um what, what was it a complex the complex <laughs> con i think yeah that was, that was pretty interesting so i was yeah. like you know i never thought of that you know yeah that's sometimes that's what you got to do to get you know to get to where you got to go and you know yeah it's not wrong with that you know you you got to be genuine but at the same time, you know, it's not all about the music. It's about who you know, how you are as a person. And, you know, this industry is small. And there's room for everyone. You just got to, you know, be grounded. Yeah, I, for, I forgot I included that um, complex kind of story in there. Yeah, that's that's a super – it's just so many gems yeah, in that interview alone. Right. Um, well, well, perfect, man. I'm really glad that you have actually used the stuff. I mean, networking, like, you have to literally – do this stuff there's no sitting down right. read it um right not just networking so many of the other tips whether it's just on the, the channel that's free here or somebody else's youtube channel or how, wherever you're getting this information from just straightforward if you don't actually implement it you're not gonna be like yeah. you're not gonna get the progress from it i, I know a lot of people who spend a lot of time watching videos and hey man give a view on my channel hey buy the guy like do all that stuff but if you're not gonna implement yeah. it you will be wasting your time like it just yeah. is what it is and you got to stick with some of the things don't necessarily believe everybody taking information from anybody but at least find a few trustworthy few and um and yeah. and actually put in that work and, and make yeah. those real connections in real life um so with that being said man once again appreciate you marcus scott uh, no problem, man. i want to know any more about the music my uh, master music networking guide the finesse guide to making connections in the music industry. I will put a link in the description below, probably put it somewhere on top of the screen um, as well. Uh, but other, and then on the, other than that, reach out to Marcus Scott again at Marcus underscore Scott on Instagram. If you have any um, information about his come up, you want to ask him, him some questions about the guide or whatever. Um, he actually uh, has, he offered this interview up to me. I didn't like solicit him for anything. Um, and he's, but I, but, and I only accepted it because I had been hearing about, like, he had been emailing me for a while, you guys. Yeah, we've been, we've been, ever since he started the YouTube channel, we've been. Yeah, and, and he, uh, yeah, I been alone. read my emails. There's a lot of people that I do talk. I can't, like, be a one-on-one -on -one consultant 100% with everybody, but if you guys send me emails, I answer them when I come, and I, and I remember people. Um, so make sure you email me as well. Uh, if you if you got some questions and you just want to keep me updated with where you are in CI, yeah, I seen his growth. I knew he was serious. He wasn't BSing. Uh, just to keep that in mind, you guys. So he is a good resource from whether he's failed or succeeded in some things. He only has eight eight K followers right now, but he's made some real connections. Um, he can give you his perspective of the journey. Just another uh, good resource, a trustworthy source to mess with because he's introduced me. Um, he's in even introduced me to a few technologies or whatever that I checked into or services just to see if I was going to introduce it to you guys um, yet. Um, and if I do, that'll be on the channel, of course. But other than that, you guys, hey, as always, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And other than that, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.